welcome back to the channel and to my journey with the Lotus Esprit. Now today I'm on my way to try and get the carburettors tuned a little bit better. Um, I'm off to see a guy who I met at the uh, last Vista Scramble. He had a, a Lotus Esprit S1 and he's something of a guru around S1 circles particularly but he said it helped me out with the S3 as well. Now what's happening is, although the engine's rebuilt and the engine itself seems pretty good, the fueling is perhaps not quite right. Um, I think, it, and I'm no expert by any means, I think it's over-fueling slightly. So when it's, uh, when it's idling, it's sort of a lot of bumps and pops from the exhaust. Um, when, it gets, when the engine's got warm and um, you know, you're coming into a town or you're coming down into a village where it's sort of 30 miles an hour, it starts to get a bit lumpy and, and sort of misses a little bit. Out on the open road, um, you know, sort of 60, 70 on a, on a dual carriageway, fine, no problem at all, but it's just those, those other parts. Now, when I spoke to him about it first, he said, he asked me a, a, what I thought was a quite a strange question. He said, what kind of pistons have you got? Well, I had to look back into the um, you know, previous videos and photography that I'd got just to give him a, a, a sort of a photo of the surface of a piston. And he came back and said, ah, you've got high compression pistons. Now my engine's a low compression engine, the high compression didn't come in until sort of later into the 80s. So initially I started getting worried that you know, I've done something stupid and bought high compression pistons and put them into an engine without any, any other modification. So I asked him what the implications might be. He said, well, the thing is nobody really sells low compression pistons because who'd want to build, rebuild a, an engine and make it no better than it was? So he said, most people do put high compression pistons in, which is why that's what's being sold. Um, so, he himself, when he rebuilds engines, and had I known about him beforehand, I would have got him to rebuild my engine. He said he has a particular recipe that he does. So there's certain sorts of pistons and you know, valves and whatever, you know, the other things that he does around the engine for the carburetor to make it go from sort of a low compression to high compression. And what is um, kind of X factory, a sort of 160, 162 brake horsepower engine, he can get up to 197, so that's quite an improvement. Anyway, he said because of that, there's less space, because the, the, the surface of the pistons is flat, there's less space in the, uh, in the cylinder at compression. So when there's, if the fuel is coming in as if there's more space, there could be more fuel, and so it's sort of overfueled, if you like. Anyway, that's the theory that we're working with. Um, I'm off to see him, it's about a 45 minute, an hour's drive from here. Um, should be a, a nice drive as well, just you know, through countryside I can take. I, there was a motorway route, but why would you do that? Um, so yes, I'm off to see the, uh, the S1 or S3 guru. Um, and let's hope he can do something to fix the, the fueling or carburetor issues that I'm having. Anyway, I'll catch up with you again when, uh, when I'm arriving and hopefully he'll be okay with his filming. He has been on TV before, so fingers crossed um, he, won't be, he won't have a problem with being on a YouTube channel. So you probably can't tell at the moment, but just sitting here, so I'm sitting in a village at some, some traffic lights and the engine's sort of just that little bit lumpy. You can hear it sort of bum, 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 like that as it's sort of uh, ticking over. And just coming into the village um, at, uh, you know, kind of third gear, 30 miles an hour, and just up a slight rise as well, putting your foot down, it just wasn't really delivering the power. Um, I don't know, it sort of feels as if it's sort of, it is getting too much fuel and it just can't burn it all quick enough so it's not producing enough bang. Um, anyway, hopefully, uh, Hopefully the Esprit Whisperer will be able to sort it out. So we're going to have a little look around the garage and this is a bit of a garage to die for. I think everyone would love this garage. Now this is um, Evora number one, first, uh, first production Evora. Um, 
this is his Esprit S1 so this is the one that's pretty well sorted the one he uses all the time um, he's got his son's Elise S1 in here as well that they're just doing some kind of engine I think they're doing the head gasket on um, and this Esprit um, is an S1 however it's a uh, development car that the factory used to when they were working on S2 so it's got a lot of um, bits and pieces on it that aren't that isn't on any other S1 because obviously they were working on things for the S2. Um, got a body shell up there that's being underneath the Elise clam front clam shell uh, that's been worked on, and then various um, chassis up the back there. Lotus had it on on uh, like one of our demonstrations, so I put the word as put Esprit number plates on. Um, so I've just finished restoring it. I only got the original engine about a year ago. So I've restored it, finished it. It's done 40,000 miles, but it was a complete shit tip when I got it. <laughs> so Sarah's, this is the original material yeah. on the dash. Sarah's had to redo a lot of the seats, um, the headlining, all of it's been redone with the original material. Yeah. Um, so it's probably the most original, um, you know, car that, that you can get. Really, there's nothing not original apart from the red clutch pipe, which is braided instead of mm -hmm. not being braided, and the shock absorbers are Protex. Right. And that's the only non-original thing on it. And that's how I should have done. Had the engine done, you know. So uh, you know, so it looks like it's been rebuilt. Basically, that would have been yeah. my. Opinion. What what's the what's the paint? You said it's. I use this POR silver. So this is POR top coat black. Yeah. But I use the silver. The struts upside down. Yeah, both struts. I told him last time. Which struts are upside down? Those. Are those? Are they? Nice to know. You didn't tell me last time, but now I know. These struts are upside so down. Basically, <laughs> there's a fluid in here, yeah. which is used to lubricate the seal in right, there. Right. Yeah. And if you have them the other way, your fluids just sitting in there yeah, never lubricate. Yeah. Interesting. So they will last five years like that, okay. or twenty years the other way up. I'll switch them around then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So basically, we, un we took off two plug leads here. Then we took off these two plug leads and it ran hardly any different with these two off. That one made a difference. This one's not even idling on it. When we took off these, the engine nearly died yeah. because this carburetor is doing all the work and this one is doing nothing. Yeah. And that's why you've got this fluffiness. Okay. Well, so that must have changed because I, I watched them balance front to back. But oh. you could hear the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw them. They did say it was pulling more from one side than the other, but it's obviously gone back to how it was. Whatever it is they did is undone itself. So there should be something in there, in the, in these bits here. Yeah. And then in here, yeah, whatever O-rings are, are kind of crushed. So you see it mounts. So what, what's the purpose of it doing that, of, it of wiggling? It the fuel frothing as the engine runs. Okay. It's, the vibration in your carburetors yeah. is exactly the same as the engine when that just dampens it out. Okay. So the fuel's going in and, and literally frothing, bubbling and, yeah. and that and obviously. And then your longer. levels are pretty irrelevant. Right. And the fuel level in the carburetor is crucial. Yeah. And if the carbs frothy everywhere, then it's gonna make the fuel level irrelevant. Right. Okay, so everything between everything between the nut and the housing, yeah, you get get rid of and yeah. get get new stuff, yeah, yeah, and then just change those because they've been crushed so much. Yeah, I would say that they wouldn't have enough. So that in them that to that sort of bit in between the yeah, two. Yeah, there's an O-ring each side of that Misa plate. Yeah, and you want to just change those two O-rings at the same time. And did you say they, they should have a? It's slightly conical that gives you the extra oomph. Yes, yeah, so it, a Lotus one has a conical part which gives you five horsepower more. And the cone goes that way? Yes. Yeah. Where the float uh, goes up and down, 
uh, the, the tab was all bent but the actual height of the float was perfect so and what was nice is no one had been in there and like messed around with it and bent it all in funny angles like you often get so that was good someone had done this carburetor up and knew what they were doing many moons ago yeah and I'd also like a set of the rubber ga two sets of the rubber gaskets you know the cam cover gaskets your medical rubber ones Sounds perfect. All right, I'm leaving in five minutes, Phil. I'll open the back gate for you. Perfect. See you soon. Bye. Bye. So we've done everything we can now, which is actually not a great deal, other than um, Matt's managed to identify the issue. So the issue being, as I think I said, this is too rigid. There should be a little bit of flex here to allow for the uh, carburetors to kind of sit and and resonate at uh, slightly, you know, different different bumps and whatever to the engine. Because they're going up and down with the engine, um, the fuel is coming into them and then frothing, so bubbling, and that's what's causing some of the issues. There's also a bit of imbalance um, front to back. It seems like the back is doing all the work. I have to take the carbs off, and top and bottom on each of these is this. And what it should be, and there's obviously it was there, but it's a bit missing. What it should be is this sort of rubber washer sandwich. So there's a sort of rubber thing in between two metal washers. It um, looks like half of it's half of it is left here but it's been done up far too tight and that then means that there's nothing there's no movement it also means probably that these um, plates here have which have o-rings like this either side are likely crushed so i need to replace those as well a few other things spotted whilst we're here there's a slight weeping from the um, cam covers so i've got different uh, different gaskets some sort of medical grade rubber ones for that and you know just then little trivial things that you know people who know what they're talking about and looking at know is these were the wrong way up um, they were upside down but anyway that's what's been sorted um, the float levels have been checked and they're okay there's a little bit something bent inside this one but otherwise good inside so what we're gonna have to do once I've done all that work is come back here and then uh, then the Ispri Whisperer will uh, will do his magic well, I'm done at, uh, at Matt's uh, just because uh, there's obviously not a you know, limited amount of things we could actually do. I didn't really have time to to get the carburetors off uh, today, so I'm uh, kind of short for time. So I've got some work to do, um, and when I've done that work, I should be able to go back and uh, get uh, get Matt to sort of 
balance things up a bit better and to tune things up properly. He says pretty much anything he does now is going to be a bit of a waste of time. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like, please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me keep the motivation for doing this kind of thing. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.